about uh, a camera. Next to it and next to the pharmacy, there is an electronic shop. And there, yes, for sure, you'll find a, uh, a camera. Lazarus 
come for me. The other pictures behind the, or in the inside of the church, behind wall or the behind, above the main entrance, that is showing the anointing of that lady. Uh, and uh, uh, with uh, using that alabaster jar for the her and body of Jesus. And the other picture on the other side is Mary and Martha. They are uh, with Jesus as it was a kind of something that they are always uh, had that kind of the talk. And one of the talks that it was, one of the ladies complaining as most of the work I'm doing and she is not doing anything. <laughs> and that is where we are in Bethany. Near the church, there is a tomb. Near the church, there is a tomb. And because of the wind, I mean the weather and the, uh, the pavement there, it can be really very slippery in order. And also, it can be a little bit difficult to go up into the tomb. Uh, the tomb, it's a built up. It's not even like the one I have pointed out to you the other day when we were driving on the main road. Remember where that rolling stone is? Yes. The first day, remember? Yes. So this is how that place is yes. supposed to be, but none of these things in here can be seen. After tomorrow, when we are visiting the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, I will show you one of these tombs, how it used to look like during the time of Jesus. To be honest with you, if we are not visiting the tomb over there, it does not mean we are losing a lot because of different reasons. Difficulty in walking to that place and slippery, plus also nothing is original from the time of Jesus. So what we will do is just to go for the church, have a look at the church, then also there where we will have our Mass for today.
that kind of authority is a really challenge. Sometimes we see a barrier, we see a difference, we see prejudice, and we get angry. Okay, and that's not the first reaction. But eventually what we have to do is either take that angry and anger and the rest of your shoe, and then let it go. Because anger is no good when labels. Righteous anger may be righteous anger. But if it stays on too long, it's not righteous anger anymore. 
and furthermore, by their descending, you will see many of these or this group of people who lived in this part of this country as thousands of years ago how they used to live in what we are referring to as the nomadic way of life, the Bedouin way of life, the place where they have to move out from one place into another, looking forward for more uh, grass, for more things to be grown into where they live and have a good day. Uh, a grazing land for their animals. It's really making a very big difference and I'm sure that you can see a very big difference for what we have seen up to yesterday in the afternoon when we arrived on the upper part of the it's Judean like mountains desert. and how everything is dry. Totally different for except yeah, for this time forest. of the year as you have experienced our rain in this country that it can be a, a rain of one or two or even three days then next day it's going to be a sun shining as today is and by then it will be with uh, more of that grass is growing on these wilderness so it's almost at the beginning of the spring look at the Bedouin over here where they live in these shacks it does not mean they live in such a way like this it means they are a poor people they can be many of them doing good in some places not maybe here necessarily but it can be in the southern part of the country you can see a tent that kind of the houses for that community, for that group of people, and on the front of it, you can see a Mercedes Benz. Put him on the 
on the donkey and bring him into the uh, uh, that station that it used to be a halfway in between Jerusalem to Jericho. Saying to him and gave him two denarius and saying to him, if you need more money, I will give you on my uh, uh, way back. So that is how this man he said, I will do as a Samaritan then. A kind of advertising that Jesus has given against these priests and these Levites, as they have all ready coming from the Jordan River, have their ritual cleaning and they are on their way after the city of Jerusalem because they were always looking for, for their temple. Their temple as a physical temple to do the prayer at. And that is how that man is in relation of that story. With more of that, it can be a very well concerned for that family. More of, more of these uh, valleys, as you can see, the land is getting drier over here. Not anymore of these green as the mountains swell up because here it's a little bit of lower of lower uh, of lower um, uh, I mean average of the rainfall the sea level sign is coming soon on your right where that camel look at the sign over here at the side of the main road to the right the, the sea level and a very big part of this area especially and that is why they don't really move out from one place into another uh, because the minute they are leaving out from here they will lose their return due to another political issue so that is home and the Bedouin as maybe you have seen many of them in this area the more you go into the Negev the more of these Bedouin it can be and there is always a kind of a very big issue with this community, with the government of Israel, especially in the southern part of the country as they are not really recognizing many of their towns and villages and really wanted to have them in being on one place, not to, to move out from one place into another, as they used to live. Over here, because that kind of the tree 
inhabited city in the world. Date back from the time of the Canaanite. Date back from the time of the Canaanite.
and also the way of the how the, the, the development of his life and instead of living in these natural cave or it can be sometimes in outdoor he started to build his own houses using for the first time the mud breaks that is for the mud break and by then building his own houses figure out that it would be even safer if he is going to include a wall surrounding the area where he lived and by then it can be uh, it can be a, a very safer way of uh, using uh, that way of the construction and have the city gate from where they can go in and come out of the city look at that building on the other side to the left that is uh, the very best example of that construction material as the mud brick that is the mud brick for the way how they are uh, like drawing and uh, building these houses it's the same city we are reading about in book of joshua we know from book of joshua in the old testament with the israelites they came from the moab mountains and they have to cross over the jordan valley and river which we are going to see later on when we are leaving the city of jericho there where he have to uh, have the thing in the city of jericho i mean and to make that place quite very very interesting crossing over the city of jericho and the city that was taken by them is where i will point out that place to you very shortly it's a place where uh, we have a, a ruined city not only really very well excavated as the other places we visited, for example, Megiddo, there where you can see temple, there where you can see a city gate, there where you can see many things, but in the city of Jericho, none of these things it can be seen. So this is where we are right now, over here. What we will do right now is just to go very close to Mount Tabor, uh, sorry, Mount of Temptation. And on the lower part of that mountain, we will view that mountain from a distance. That church, the monastery of Temptation, the place where Jesus was tempted by the devil. Look at the side of the road over here to the right, that is what we call it, Tell us so years of sand or earth. That was an excavated place during the time of the Catholic Canyon of an excavation came about the year 1954 and there where they have that place and they found and they are claiming a part of that wall which it came back from about the year 15. Uh, back from about the year uh, uh, the year 2200 that is even earlier from the time of the Israelite coming into this country and where the wall was tumbled down. So we have over 31 different cities that are being built on top of each other. So that is the whole area of Jericho, the way how it was expanded a lot in where we are right now. And very soon we will be on where it can be really a very good view toward that monastery. The idea of living in what we call it in in English, the wilderness in Hebrew is the Midbar, the place to meditate, the place where they live. Oh, 
the, the, the place where he lived, the, the place where the devil came to him after he was fasted in the wilderness for 40 days and nights. What happened afterwards? The devil came to him and tempted him for the first time. Then up that mountain there is another mount, another uh, like church or a wall. That is the place of either the second or the third. And the place of either the second or the third temptation, it took place at the pinnacle of the temple, the place which we are going to see at our point that place here tomorrow. Okay, this is where we are living and this is where you can come down and uh, we can give you some banana, banana. and uh, you can <laughs> and uh, that is where you can go and have a look at the monastery of the temptation until group in yeah yeah it's a greek uh, greek orthodox monastery yes father yes that is the monastery you can go out have some banana you can see a lot of these natural caves on your left the people they used to live in a, a, a hermit way of life in these natural caves and through that way they can be away from any danger from anyone threaten them then later on they can go at the end of that prayer back to their homes still the idea it had been developed to what we call it a synopium way of life then later on a monastic way of life monks then later on building a monastery and instead of these monks to live and to pray for some times then later on to go home they can be living together in the idea of the monastery that it was developed from the idea of the synopium then into the monastic way of life that it can be many of them and over 200 of them it can be in all over the country this place in relation of where jesus was tempted by the devil for three times the summit of that mountain there is a fortress being built during the crusaders and uh, never rebuilt afterwards so that is how the summit of that mountain it is within like a wall in the place of the second or even the third i will show you that when we are going that is a banana over here to the left and that is where uh, the place i will show you the, the third temptation tomorrow when we are going to be visiting some places in the city of Jerusalem. A crusader, yes. Yeah, look over here, there is a lot of agricultural, and most of the agricultural in the city of Jericho, they can be a little bit more of uh, organic. And this is why it can be attracted many people to come during the summer or even the winter time to buy their own fruit from the city of Jericho, especially the banana, the citrus, orange, apricot, peaches, and uh, many of these uh, things over here. Yeah, very short. 
shortly we are going to some inner place. There they have uh, a beautiful and a big selection of the ceramic and the hand blowing glass. Also they have uh, a Dead Sea lotion for the women to be younger and to get younger maybe. And for men, yes. Not necessarily only to be for men and uh, for ladies, but it also can be used for the women. Uh, they have a very good selection and they have also leather bags and they have many different things and a beautiful thing out of there. We'll stop there for some time till later on we will be leaving out from the city of Jericho and we'll be heading toward the, the city or outside of Jericho to the Jordan River, the baptismal place. And in the place where we are going to stop at, it is a safe place to use your credit card, yes. Look at the date palm tree on this side over here to the left. And even in uh, the time of uh, Jesus, uh, according to Josephus Flavius, there was over uh, 12,000 olive trees in the city of Jericho, which it can be a good number. And by this, you can produce more of that date, as it is uh, the similarity in between the date tree and the life of the human being are really a lot. Yes. <coughs> Present? Oh, yeah. uh, no, it's not, uh, it's, it was like a concrete wall, you mean, right? Where is that? No, no that is uh, not the present actually. It's uh, like uh, the main headquarters and the number of, or the complex of the government offices. But they have to have that wall well decorated but they have no money to do that. <laughs> no, no, it's not a lunch, it's a shopping, and over there also, I have asked from them to uh, uh, to have for you a fresh lemonade with mint. So when we go in the, the shop, we can have... Uh, so so good. Good. Did Linda say that? No. those cups if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and tap those cups together for you, just to give you an idea of how strong this glass physically is. Of course, we know all glass breaks, but it's a lot stronger than the average glass. So you just bear with me for a moment while I do this. Furthermore, I'm gonna show you how special this glass is. I'm gonna have this young man just take a couple of those items up to that light so you can physically see how the sand settles in each item. This is pure, this is by the way pure sand that is cooked with it. That color is supernatural, it will never fade or change. Oh, cool. Folks, I'm gonna show you the sunset. We call this color a sunset. And the reason that we call that a sunset, go ahead sir, if you don't mind. Take a look at this color. Oh, oh wow. I'm gonna show you just two more colors because we can go on doing this all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm show you, take a look at this. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, 100% free of lead also. This is 100% locally handmade. So this should also safe as well and microwave safe. We have that in sizes, styles to choose from. Uh, I want to show you one more plate if I may. I apologize. Uh, this is a different family that makes. This is a uh, pretty famous artist that does that. Yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but I assure you that it takes a lot of time to make this. So it's in my kitchen. We have those in different shapes, designs, that's all behind me. Uh, I will stop with this carpet, folks. Yeah, so I want to exactly. show you this. They have a major, by the way, carpet section that sits in the back. This is 100% pure silk, by the way. Wow. And it's embroidered. 1,400 stitches per square on that carpet. We have that on wool as well, and silk. It's all local. Uh, we'll start, if you don't mind, sir, we'll show you. Take a look at this uh, shawl right here. Take a look at this shawl right here. This is also silk, by the way, and it's all hand embroidered as well. We do have a major section of the Dead Sea Cosmetics that sits behind you, facial treatments, body treatments for men and women as well. 
Then we have a one very unique item here, the Roman glass, folks, if you know anything about your Roman glass. Uh, all of it comes with certificates of authenticity, uh, opal stones, malachite stones of that nature, and they have very exclusive diamond department that sits in the back as well. Prices are in U.S. dollar. The reason that we chose that, since we have uh, four groups that come from all over the world, and the U.S. dollar being the international international currency, we went ahead and made all prices in the U.S. dollar. But you can pay any currency that you like. The use of a credit card is pretty safe, secured, and insured. And we ship folks. We use FedEx and UPS. Shipping is safe, secured, and insured. It takes about seven to ten business days before you get your shipment. God forbid, let's say I shipped a set for you, and let's say an item broke. Uh, you don't have to return it back. We don't want you to return it back. All we want you to do is take a photo of the broken item, send it to us uh, off of our website, our email, and we'll go ahead and replace it for you. So you don't even have to send the broken item back, okay? We managed to get you folks domestic rates on um, shipping rather than, in, that rather than international uh, rates. For example, Especially on those sets, folks, we are going to offer you 20% discount off of each item that you purchase. So if you purchase one set, you'll get 20% discount off the set. Two sets, you'll get 20% discount off of each set. The 20% discounts that we give you on those sets does cover your ship. Okay? Uh, normally, it costs us about $80 to $90 to have a shipment minimum charge. But uh, it's going to cost you about $45 to have one of those sets shipped. That's why the 20% discount we offer you will cover your ship. Could you, mix them? you could mix. You could mix them as you like, ma'am. You could mix. Uh, whatever, whatever. We have some that are. Uh, if you behind you, if you look behind you, we got some that are loose. But if you want, we can. We can mix. Okay. Do they have martini uh, glasses? Not, I was Don't wondering you. about that. <laughs> Same. Yes. I was asking for you. <laughs> if you have any questions, please feel free. Yeah. Okay. By the way, folks, the six-piece sets are one eight hundred. Yeah, it can hurt for her. The seven-piece sets, which is with a decanter or a pitcher, they're two twenty-nine ship. Otherwise. If you care to take it with you, we'll bubble it for you. We'll give you a percent discount off the price. Okay? Enjoy yourself. If you have any questions. $240 for a set with the picture. $200 just the set of what comes in. $240. I'd like to get a matching picture like that.
lot of uh, different opinions of different people and different countries in the world which make even the thing more and more complicated complication look at the head of us where you can still see a part of that mountain ridge on the other side to the left that is the Moab mountain which is Jordan all of these cities that you can see on the top of that mountain that they are all in Jordan Jordan as a country and in where we are right now it's all a military area this is the place where we are referring to from the biblical period as the land of Berea the place where John the Baptist was baptizing people and also the thing that he was doing is being fulfilled by John the Baptist when Isaiah is speaking of the word is heard in the wilderness shouting and preparing for the coming of the Messiah and that is where later on when Jesus approached into where he was working and where he was baptizing people from Nazareth which is behind us in the other part of the country and how Jesus he came in here and once he came and asked from John to baptize him and said to him it is me who need to be baptized from you that is where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist that is when later on a dove came from the heaven and a voice heard that this is my beloved son so this is where it all took place in this area of where we are right now and this is the land of Berea the land that is really very close from the city of Jericho the place where we will be at the Jordan River side now the place and the reason why I skipped the Jordan River the other day from the program because it was within the northern part of the Jordan Valley and River there we know for sure it is not nothing to do with the authenticity it is to do with this location of where we are right now because it is the place where he was baptizing the people at the Jordan River quite very interesting also about the importance of this place how it used to look like and have a very good thick number of people on their way to start their journey on their pilgrimage tour or journey up to the city of Jerusalem all supposed to start from here that is the Jordan River and that is where we will go for the visit of which it was closed for almost uh, or since the year 1967 till only the year 19 or till about the year 2010 when they have opened this place for the two groups to go before that it used to go up into the northern part and the reason why they have opened it is because the Jordanian side it was open for the visitor so to compete with the Israelis they have opened their side from where we will be driving over there very shortly so that is the Jordan River the baptismal place and uh, uh, it can be as I said open only once a year at the day of Epiphany according to the Greek Orthodox calendar that is on the 18th of January which means like a week ago when oh, the uh, they have to go and uh, to do the prayer there when the patriarch of the church is heading and do the prayer at the Jordan well, River the Baptist one place we are right now as we're driving somewhere over here to the left that is one of the terminal to go into a crossing point between Israel to Jordan or from Jordan to Israel by what it is called a Lenby Bridge or King Hussein Bridge the terminal at the Jordanian side named after King Hussein uh, that he was running over Jordan and his son accessor actually of the present days so that is how this place we are heading to there right now look at these buildings and these uh, places or churches at the other side the more we are getting closer the easier and uh, good view it can be some of these are for the catholic one of them is for the greek orthodox 
that it can be like the nearest to the Jordan River and the others is for the Lutheran, for the Russian, for the Romanian and many of these churches whom they started to build more and more of these churches at the other side of the Jordan River.
guys. Yeah, I got some. If I missed you, just stay there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Jordan won. He got me. He just said that. Get some. Back to where you want. What the water? If I miss you, what did you use holy water? Huh? Well, I'm not sure. It's a buffer zone in between the Israeli side and the, the Jordanian side. So this is how the Jordan River and this is how this place it can be even more meaningful to visit rather than going into the other emotional or even a business place at the northern part of the country. The Jordan River gets its water from the main supplier of water. One of them is Dan, the other one is
as one of the Jewish group of people who lived in the country during the time of the Second Temple period is the Essenes. We know not also spoke about the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the other group of people who also were against the Roman and also have an accusation that the Roman are occupying the country or their kingdom who are the Zealots and the other group of people who are the Essenes. At the side of the road to the left, it's a place by the name of Ain Hajla or St. Gerasimus. St. Gerasimus place on this side over here to the left. That is one of the monasteries in the desert. Gerasimus is the place or that man or that monk of about the year 450 AD. Over here now to the left you can see it. He lived in this area, there was a natural cave in the same location where this building is. And they have a tradition of the time of the Byzantine where the Holy Family, on their way to Egypt, they made a stop, they made an overnight, a shelter for the Holy Family when they fled into Egypt. Leaving out from the city of Bethlehem to where we are right now, and most probably on the other side of the Jordan River and the Dead Sea, on where the King's Highway, that it was one of the good connection for the people to go toward Egypt. And that is where, in that monastery, they are showing some of these icons of where Mary had nursed her son Jesus. So this is where we are right now, next to one of these old monasteries of about the century five, of many of these monasteries being in the different part of the country. Guys, we are heading to Qumran where this community of the Essenes who lived about uh, like the second the century BC up to so about the year 66 AD by the beginning of the Jewish revolution. There, okay. This community they knew very well. It's going to be a day for where the Romans are coming and they are going to ruin their place. So therefore they have prepared for that by have a lot of these scrolls that was written by them, have these scrolls in a jars. And in these jars or these jars they were hidden in the natural cave within the mountain. I will point out to you in where we are heading to there very shortly. Qumran is called the site, this place, which is really making uh, the rediscovering of as the most important thing and all for a sudden. I've pointed out to you the Bedouin this morning and some of these Bedouin, they were bringing their flocks into that area very close from Qumran or where that community left. And while they have lost one of their goats or sheep, it can be really something very serious for that uh, uh, shepherd to lose any of his sheep or goats and he have to search searching in almost every natural cave by throwing a stones and while he was throwing some of these stones in some of these natural caves he heard that something was like getting thrown from inside of the of that natural cave later on he dared to go in and the only thing he found is scrolls pieces of leather well he was happy and felt happy because by then he can go to a shoemaker, to a scapular, and there where he can have his first shoes. Yeah. Fortunately, when he went from here to the city of Bethlehem, that it was all Bethlehem and this part of the country and also even the eastern part of the city of Jerusalem as a part of Jordan till the Six Days War. So people, whenever they used to travel out from one place into another, it was not really something easy to do and to travel. In addition, also he's working as a shepherd. Maybe he belong or these animals is his or sometimes he can work for the families. He brought these scapula or the, these pieces to a shoemaker in Bethlehem. And that shoemaker, he's from the Syrian Orthodox Church. The Syrian Orthodox people or church up to this moment, they are a very small Christian minority and a small church in the country. And these people, they still use 
the language of the Lord. That is the Syrian Aramaic language or even one of its branches of the old or the Aramaic language. And the minute these pieces brought to him, he looked at and he can really see some of these writing on. And that kind of the writing he found on these scrolls is from the book of Isaiah, from the Old Testament, from the Bible. He was really very happy. He have said to that man, if you have more of these scrolls, bring it to me and I will give you maybe the best shoes you ever dream of. He have kept a good number of these scrolls in his custody for the year 1967. Just look over here on the other side to the left where these buildings are. There used to be like a, a, there, a, a, I mean a hotel. And they were exactly by the seashore. And look how far is the water by now. Wow. Oh, so wow. It's a, a big drop in the Sea of Galilee, uh, the Dead Sea, I mean, uh, out of its level due to the shrinking. So this is what we mean by the shrinking of the Dead Sea. Now, this man or this shoemaker, he have given some of these pieces to the bishop of his church. And that bishop, he went to America and showed them to some of the scholars, whom they said this can be one of the important rediscovering thing in the country as the oldest inscription of the Bible. And little by little, more of these scrolls being found by the Bedouin who were looking of more of these scrolls, and they have found these scrolls in about 11 of these caves that I'll find some of them when we are going up into the ruins of that place. So that is how the story of this Dead Sea Scroll started to be uh, revealed a little bit more within or uh, the first rediscovery happened on the year 1947, 48. Also more of these scrolls being found and uh, about the year 1950 where he traveled to America, that bishop of Lim, he showed these pieces to some of these uh, scholars back there and then later on have more of these pieces and a part of the expedition team came from Belgium on the year 1952 and the year 1954 and more of that excavation it took place by Catholic Canyon uh, up to the year 1967 when Holy more God. of these scrolls or yeah. uh, expedition team came from uh, some of the archaeologists in Israel, Yadin is one of them, and this is what we will be able to see the ruins of where this community have lived over that place. So that is where we are now heading to the place, into where we are right now going to Qumran, located on the northwest side of the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea many, many years ago, it used to be very close from the, from the main road. So whatever you can see, like for example over here on your left, you can see that the, the water it's really used to be very close from where we are driving right now, and that is where our next stop. It's really uh, right now it's one, and I know some of you might be hungry by now, but it's better to do the visit of that place first. Then in the same stop when we leave the bus. We will go for the visit of that place, then we will go for our lunch at a self-service restaurant. In that lunch, you can have a lunch for nine, you can have nine dollars, that is a falafel sandwich with one drink, or a schnitzel, or a chicken, or shawarma for ten with one drink, or if you don't like that, you can have uh, like a drink, you can have a soup, you can have a self-service a buffet of different thing of that buffet and uh, for I think 15 or 16 dollars not including the drink so you can have for 5, you can have for 9, you can have for 10 you can have for 15 according to the price list of that place so this is where we are right now heading to that place so please make sure before you leave the bus to take whatever you want for the visit, for the lunch and also in that uh, kibbutz or in that uh, uh, restaurant, uh, they have a big uh, gift shop for more and all brand names of the Dead Sea uh, lotion and also t-shirts, many many of these things. Uh, that is uh, another chance, but you don't have to. 
Africa will be together for the visit of this place.
had to come back and change and later on be ready because after here we are driving back to the hotel. Uh, about 3 o'clock right now, almost 3 o'clock. Uh, I would say, or really, 5 there to was 3 something even. Uh, shall we say like half an hour, 40 minutes, is that good? Yes. For you to walk and to have a long to touch and uh, to be back again to the bus for that kind of experience. So let's uh, try to say like 3 40, 3 30, 3 40 to come back and uh, where we'll be driving from here to the hotel. Sounds good? These girls, they have owners. They are not like this in wild life. They are taking, and there was a shepherd with them. But they don't want to go. They are not uh, walking around in this wilderness, and they are grazing them within this part of this area. And that is how the camel, that it can be even the meat camel, can be even purchased. They slaughtered the camel and they can Process. get benefit from different oh. kind of things, especially the meat. Oh, that's kind of what my lunch tasted like. Not over here on both sides of the street, to the right, to the left. This is an installation, a camp for the Jordanian army before the year 1967. As it used to be this area, this part of the country, as a part of Jordan, which is right now at the head of us. Notice how the Dead Sea being shrunk a lot for the last couple of years. And uh, this is what it makes the difference in where we will be to furthermore in the lower part and within a distance.
to the city of Jerusalem the same way we drove with it this morning. And right after, Father, you will have the rosary for us. Uh, I will tell you what is going to be for later on of this evening. And also for tomorrow morning and our time and the places we will see and visit for our day of tomorrow. Uh, 6 o'clock, 6 15, uh, 6 30 is uh, breakfast, and uh, about 7 30, 7 40 maximum, we will be leaving from the hotel where we will be driving up to the Mount of Olives for and to look at the places on the Mount of Olives, including the following the place of the Ascension, the other place next to it is the place of the Paternoster the place where Jesus taught his disciples how to pray our Father. Then later on, on the summit of that mountain, we will be making our way on the top of that mountain to visit the church of the Dominus Clement down to the Garden of Gethsemane and where also the church of all nation or even the church of the agony. From there we will be in the bus and we will be driving up to the Mount Zion to have a look at the uh, Church of St. Peter in Galicanto. Then later on we'll be heading again to Bethlehem for the visit or to have our lunch and after the lunch where we will do the visit of uh, Shepherd's Field and then later on up to the Church of the Nativity. And while we are up in the Church of the Nativity, have a look at the birthplace of Jesus. We will have a look at the uh, or where we will have the Mass at the Church of St. Catherine for our uh, scheduled Mass for our day tour of tomorrow. Then we will be driving back to, the, to home. So this is what our day tour of tomorrow is going to be, places in the city of Jerusalem and later on to the city of Bethlehem. Okay? You got it? Yes, sir.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, and shall be in the world, and in the world. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Thank you. 